is Praxis Prepper. And today I'm wondering, could this be the 11th hour for some sort of a North Korea crisis? Uh, and if it is, what do we do about that? Uh, I know that for a lot of people watching this channel and for myself, we've been prepping for a while. We have plans, we've got contingencies, we've thought about it. Uh, but you're never ready. You're never 100% ready. You always feel like, oh man, I wish it was a, I'd done this or I'd done that. Uh, you know, when, when, when things actually happen. And there's a lot of people watching this channel, I'm sure, that uh, are just starting out into prepping. Uh, so I'll tell you, what, what did I do yesterday and today uh, in, in relation to this? Because uh, tensions are going up in the South China Sea area. Uh, the U.S. just brought in a bunch of new missile systems, uh, the defensive missile systems. Uh, the, uh, the carrier group is on its way up there, or is there. There's <laughs> a, a lot of different news stories. You don't know exactly which one to believe about uh, where those carriers are. Uh, but things, things are not de-escalating. At the moment, things are escalating. And they could continue to escalate to a point where things could really get dangerous. Now, if you're not familiar with some of the dangers from North Korea, I've got a video series on it. I'll put a link down below. You can check that out uh, where I outline uh, the basic dangers and why I don't think that North Korea is a cakewalk, <laughs> the way some people feel that it would be. Uh, why there are real dangers there that I think people should be uh, concerned about or you know, just keep, to keep their, their eye on. Uh, so what am I doing about them? Uh, well, yesterday I was uh, dropping my boy off at kindergarten and I go by a grocery store. Uh, so when I was there, I stocked up on some food. Now, I've got plenty of food in the pantry. I've, I, I, don't, I can't tell you how many months of food and how many calories I've got. It's just, there's a lot there. You know, I, I'd rather spend my time buying extra bags of beans than calculating exactly how many calories I have. But I've got a lot of food already, but I figured I'd just, you know, why not? You know, I'm going to eat it anyway. Uh, as long as I store it properly, it's going to be good. So I bought a bag of flour and I bought uh, a couple bags of rice, big bags, big guys, and uh, some dried fruit. And I topped off the water down in the basement. I got a couple hundred gallons worth of water storage down there, drinkable water down there. So I did that. And uh, uh, last night and this morning, I had a, a little chat with, uh, with Amber. Amber goes to university. It's about a 30 minute drive from the house and just chatted with her what her plan would be if you know, all the power goes out, cars don't work, well, you know, if there was an EMP uh, strike or something like that, what would she do? Now she's got a get home bag. Uh, I gave her permission to break the window of the car if she needed to get in and get anything out of there uh, you know, before she hoofs it back home, but that's her plan. She'll just hoof it home so I know what her plan is and I know what she's doing. Uh, I spoke to my, my little boy, uh, he's only five this morning, uh, and, and you know, I didn't talk to him about, you know, there's a chance there could be a war and the, you know, nuclear weapons blowing up and all the power going out. Uh, you know, I just said in ways that he could understand and that weren't going to freak him out. I just said, you know, what would you do if there was a really big storm and all the power went out while you were at school? You know, uh, do you think I'd come and get you? And he said, oh yeah, you'll, you'll, you'll probably get me. You know, I said, yep, yep, you'd be my first person, I'd go and pick you up. And then I said, well, what if, what if it was a really big storm, maybe daddy's car got hit by lightning, so I couldn't use my car. Uh, you know, would I still be coming to get you? And, and he looked at me and I said, yeah, yeah, I, I'd still come and get you. I'd just walk or I'd take a bike, but it might take me a little while to get there, but I, I would definitely be coming. So uh, you just stay with your teachers and, and I'll come and I'll pick you up. So I had, had the discussion with him in a way that didn't freak him out. And if something happens, uh, he'll remember that discussion. He'll know dad's coming to get him and, and he won't be having to freak out and feel like, you know, he doesn't know what's going to go on. So I did that yesterday. Um, now, I, I know there's a lot of people that watch this channel that are like me, they've been prepping for a while, and that's good. Good for you. Good for me. Uh, and there's a lot of people that haven't been prepping for a while, people that are new to it. And good for you too, because you're new to it. And this is a great, I think it's a great way to live your life. It's just not, a lot of people think the preppers are living in fear, and I don't think about that at all. It's, it's living with the sense of being responsible for yourself, to take care of yourself if anything happens. And shit happens sometimes, right? So, uh, it's a very relaxed way of being. And I've made videos on that, you know, the power goes out and it's no big thing, you know, I just turn on the solar, you know, whatevs. Uh, so, good for you if you're just starting out on prepping. But you got a little bit of a curve, and a lot of people find that sort of uh, intimidating, maybe. And there's plenty of videos out there on YouTube that are titled something like, if you're, if you're not already prepping, it's too late. Just throw in the towel, you know, and that's BS. It's never too late. Uh, there's always stuff that you can do. And I'm not saying that today you have to run out and buy yourself six months or a year's worth of food, you know, whatever, however the 
big that pile would be, or you know, buy yourself a, a giant cistern of water. Uh, just start, do something, you know, get some food. Anything, it doesn't even have to be special food. You know, people talk about like these special camping foods, the mountain house comes out, and military rations. No, you don't, you don't need any of that. I, anything in a can, anything that's packaged is gonna last you at least a year. And if it's food that you're gonna eat anyway, there's zero risk. You know, find something on sale. Buy a lot of it. You'll save money. You know, and uh, if nothing happens, then the worst that happened was that you saved a bunch of money buying some stuff on sale. <laughs> That's not that bad. You know, uh, get yourself some food, with stuff that you're going to eat, and uh, you know, don't worry about getting a crazy amount of it. You know, just get something for now. Get yourself a couple weeks worth of food. Get yourself some some rice, maybe some some dried beans or or canned beans, uh, and. Uh, you know, getting getting yourself some vitamins for some uh, some nutrients. You know, you don't get scurvy if you can't get fruits and vegetables, things like that. Get yourself some dried fruit, a bunch of that. Think about like you're gonna go camping, and uh, I'll do that. Water too. Consider water. You know, I I, uh, I don't really stock bottled water here. I got it's raining outside right now. I live in a wet area. There's a little creek down over here. I got water filters. You know, so I don't I don't have to worry too much about water. Um, not everyone lives in the kind of area that I live in, though. Maybe you need to get some bottled water or something like that. Uh, you got to solve that for your own area because everywhere, everywhere is so different. But have a plan for water. You know, that at least last you a couple of weeks. You know, uh, even if it's just getting some big jugs and filling them with up with water, putting some uh, chlorine in there. There's videos online that you can find out about that. I'm not going to explain exactly the proportions and everything like that. Uh, but there are specific types of bleach that you need to use. You need to look at the ingredients list. So look that up. Do that. Just get yourself some gallons and uh, do that. A lot of times uh, you can get uh, jugs at the grocery store for free. You know, just wash them out. You know, they might have had soap detergent in them or something like that if you had a bulk department at your grocery store. So look into that. But um, just uh, throw together a little plan for yourself. Just have something, even if it's just a couple of weeks, just to get you through the rough spot to the other side. We're all going to die someday. You know, the game isn't to live forever. The game is to just extend the amount of life that you have and to make it as comfortable as possible. So, you know, even if you only get yourself another couple of weeks of not starving and dehydrating to death, <laughs> you know, that's, that's, uh, that's worth doing, <laughs> I suppose. I mean, because in the end, we're all going to die. So make yourself comfortable. Think about what your needs would be if uh, you did lose services and, uh, and, and, and try to meet those. And then that'll give you some time, some, some buffer space to figure out what your next move is. But do something. It's never too late. Never too late to start. So that's it. Thanks for watching. Good luck. Hopefully nothing happens. But my suspicion is at some point something's got to happen on the North Korea thing because it's just getting worse every day that it's not handled and handling it's going to be dreadful. So, <laughs> you know, figure that one out. That's it. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and tune in every Friday at 4.30 New York time for a new video.